Hi everybody, uh, this is just a quick video uh, to show you how you can extend a KG Smart form with your own custom JavaScript. Uh, so in this example, we're going to take advantage of a technology called uh, Toaster. Uh, what Toaster does is it gives you a nice way of showing little toasts on a screen, uh, like little notifications, little messages you can pop up on the screen. Now, uh, what Toaster does is it needs a couple things. It needs you to link uh, two uh, files. Um, a uh, CSS and a JavaScript file. So we're going to uh, show you how we can bring those uh, in in a very rough, uh, rudimentary way into this KT Smart Form. Uh, there are other ways to do it. Uh, the way I'm showing you is just the fastest, quickest way of being able to bring some of this in and then be able to take advantage of, uh, of that library inside of your Smart Form. Now in the demonstration I'm going to do today, I'm just going to use the CDNs, uh, the location to those JavaScript files. Otherwise, you could take those JavaScripts, and if you've got K2 on-prem, you could actually download them, put them in a, in a folder somewhere, or perhaps go and host them in your uh, Azure subscription, or, or anywhere, really. They just need to be somewhere. Uh, I'm just going to take, take a bunch of the CDNs in, in this particular demo. Right, so uh, let's get to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, take advantage of Notepad, Pad first of all. So let's put some of the things that we want to, uh, we want to do inside of here. So first, uh, just according to this, to Toaster, I need a link to the CSS library and a link to the actual Toaster JavaScript. So I've got that inside of here, and what you can see is I'm, I'm linking to the CDN over there for both of those. So first we need those to be on the page. Uh, once we have that, we should be able to call the actual JavaScript itself. So this is an example of uh, the JavaScript in its most basic form of what you can call. So I'm just going to go and copy that and put that in my little notepad as well. So that's kind of what we want to execute. And if I'm not mistaken, if I do a comma like that, this can be a message. And this top here should be the title. So we'll see if that works a little bit later. Uh, but um, uh, for now, uh, let's go with that. Okay, so let's go back into our little K2 Smart Form over here. So what I've done is I've got a little K2 view. Uh, it's got a title, a message, and a button at the moment. It does absolutely nothing. So it's just a, a basic view. Uh, it's not even connected to any backend information. If I just click on that testing URL, you're going to see I'm just going to get the most basic uh, little form. We can put a little title, a message, hitting the button, and, and nothing's happening. So we want to extend this with some JavaScript and, and Toaster in this example. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a couple of data labels into here. So let's add a data label. This will be our uh, data label for um, our, let's actually add a little row below here just to keep it neat. So this is going to be our data label for our CSS. Let's call it that. All right, and we'll add another data label uh, for our uh, JavaScript that's going to come in. Now what you'll see is I'll mark both of those as literals. So what that means is that we can start to put HTML inside of those. So let's go to our notepad now and go and grab some of that information. So the first one is let's get that link to the uh, CSS. And I'm just going to go and put that in there, inside there like that. Something else you also want to do is you'll notice how that disappeared. You couldn't see it. So what I sometimes do is just add a little label inside of here as well. CSS. Just like that. So I know that's my CSS that's being loaded, and then what we can do is just make that control invisible so it doesn't actually show up on the screen. The other one is now the link to the JavaScript library. So again, uh, let's get our uh, script over here. Let's get that, and let's put that inside there as well. All right, the script one's nice. It shows bracket script. Uh, the CSS one doesn't, and that's why we've just added that little CSS to the front of it so that we know what's going on inside of there. Okay, so I'm just going to mark those back as uh, visible as well. So it's effectively now when this page loads, it's going to execute those and then it's going to link to those libraries. Now we want to actually execute the code. So the third thing that I'm going to do is add another little data label. Uh, this is going to be called my uh, JavaScript execute. And I'm going to mark that as a literal. Let's make it invisible as well. So inside of here is where I want to put my JavaScript that executes uh, when that button is clicked. All right. So let's now go and call that uh, that particular rule. So I'm going to go behind the little button. So when that button is clicked, what we want to do is transfer some information, transfer data. 
we want to transfer some JavaScript to our JavaScript execute. So I'm going to go here, script. All right, so the script we're going to execute is going to be our little toaster execution method over there, which is obviously the library's bringing that in. And then we'll close our script. So we can host these in, uh, in, a, in, a, in a database or in a... Um, um, in an expression, a lot of people use expressions for that. So I'm just going to clear that out. So for our uh, title, we're going to just grab the little title text box. I'm going to put that inside here. And for the message, let's just grab the message there as well. There we go. Okay. So as simple as that. Right. Then what we're going to do again is do another transfer, and we're going to clear that out. The reason why I do that is that if we click it more than once, we want to show the little toast a few times, uh, but if it's already tra transferred that JavaScript and it's exactly the same JavaScript, it's not going to re-execute because it's not going to see a change. So if we clear it and then send it back, clear it and send it back, we're going to cause that execution to take place. All right, so let's have a look at what we've got now, and let's go and see if, uh, if that works. Let's click on the little link. So this works and let's execute that. And then you can see a little toaster that's come up calling uh, that little toaster library that we've got inside of there. So it's just a very quick example of uh, showing you how to uh, bring in the, uh, the uh, Java external JavaScript information. So that's the CSS that makes it look like that, as well as the JavaScript library from toaster and then be able to actually use that inside of, uh, inside of your KT smartphone. Thanks for attending.